transition in 2014 um, to, to school nursing, where I do that two days a week. And then the other three days a week, I'm the health and wellness coordinator. And every year up until the end of 2020 and 2021, I had the best job in the world. Um, last year was a little challenging. I was the pandemic coordinator for our district and will continue to do that moving into this year. But things are brighter, hopefully. And uh, we plan on getting back to our normal scheduled programming which is uh, working on the foundations that'll keep our kids healthy. And for us, Kathy and I in particular, that uh, healthy nutrition is foundational. Um, you can have kids run in circles all day long, but if they don't eat well and they don't understand where their food comes from, then it's kind of all for naught. Um, so that is our focus in the district. So I'm going to go ahead and present to you taste testing. And then uh, a little bit later in the session, I will uh, show you a video of our gardens. I have a, a, about a six and a half minute garden tour that I will show you. So I'm going to share my screen again. Things got a little wonky. I couldn't see things happening. So I apologize. Um, again, Sam will uh, monitor the chat and we'll take questions after the, this presentation. We have some time built in. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. Whoopsie. All righty. So I found, found this really fun template. So it's a little busy, but I thought it was entertaining. So as I mentioned, we are located uh, outside of Bangor. We have uh, 2,400 students. We have seven buildings in our district and um, we have students from the grade levels of pre-K up until grade 12. Um, our wellness department is, uh, I had written this slide previous, um, just, uh, just updated in the last couple of days because now we are a department of three. We're very excited that we've recently hired a chef to work in our district to help with menu planning and really bolstering our farm to school. Um, he is going to manage one of our kitchens, so he's not just a solely a chef for our district, um, but it's exciting to have that position. And what I plan on having him do with, uh, with me and Kathy is to really expand our taste testing options. Um, Kathy and I want to have more consistency throughout the district and be able to hit more buildings. And with this additional person, we should, we should be able to do that. Um, our chef is, comes with tons of experience and we're very excited to have him join our team. Um, one of my favorite books is uh, The Secret Garden. As a child, I loved to read that because I could feel myself in that jungle garden with the vines crawling everywhere. And, uh, you know, my daughter before COVID hit, she was supposed to play Mary in a, in a play. She's, and that's one of the saddest things is that she was unable to do that because uh, it's just such a wonderful story and I would have loved to have her experience it as I did. But as long as you have a garden, you have a future. And as long as you have a future, you are alive. And our students, you know, children are our future. We talk about that all the time and the, we need to start them off on the right foot. And for us and I want our, you know, we, we center ourselves around that nutrition is so important for these kids. So this is just a sneak peek of what our gardens look like. Uh, this is our hoop house and outdoor bed at Reesbrook Middle School, which you will see more of in a, uh, a little bit. My daughter is weeding grudgingly the onions, um, but she has been out there helping. It has been fun to tell her that she does need volunteer hours for high school and she's going into high school this year. But I won't, I won't show too, too much of what we have. Um, again, these are some things in the past that we've been able to pull from our garden. Um, this year, it's going to be even more robust because we have two peach trees that are fruiting quite well. Um, and you can see the variety that we have. Cami is uh, taste, taste testing um, high bush blueberries there in that picture. Um, we wouldn't tell my mother about that, though, because she grows the the, the normal variety from the state of Maine. And Cami did enjoy the size and the tartness of the high bush. 
So taste testing, what are the benefits of taste testing? Why would you do that? And we taste test in our district to introduce new products. Um, we try to reintroduce products that, or, or vegetables that are losing their, their flavor a little bit. So, you know, we're all used to the tiny little baby carrots uh, all in one standard shape, but you know, we want kids to try them in different ways. So for example, we do roasted carrots. We use squashes in a dip. Um, we just try to, you know, entice kids in a little different way. Uh, kids' palates are growing. You know, I, I came in thinking everyone was gonna eat a casserole when I started, uh, not thinking that my own children don't do that when they were little. So we are here to help grow our kids' palates by sh uh, sharing new experiences with them um, to get them to try and to grow a little bit more. We taste tests so that we get to meet our students with a large population that we have. Some kids you just don't get to uh, engage with as much. And it's fun to see the kids who try things and when they give their feedback and what their what the taste is that they enjoyed and things like that. So it's a really great way to, to get out there with the kids. So I asked you in the beginning what your least favorite uh, fruit or vegetable was. And um, I heard lots of different things. Um, the watermelon one was interesting. My daughter can't stand watermelon either. And I thought she was the only one in the world. So she'll be happy to know that she, uh, she isn't. <laughs> Um, so what we would do with some of these things is we would try them in a different way. So green peppers, we would maybe not necessarily just do fresh green peppers, but maybe we, we cook them, we put them in a soup, uh, we, we hide things, you know, we can, we do a soup where we put tons of different things in and the kids get to try it and we get to say, hey, you know that green pepper you can't stand, you actually just ate them. So yeah, it's a little sneaky, but it's a way to reframe it so that the kids uh, enjoy enjoy something new or something old for that matter. Um, so we have done a variety of taste tests in the district. These are three examples. Uh, we did roasted carrots at our high school level. We did a three chili challenge. So we had the kids vote on what chili they liked the best. We've done blueberry smoothies a number of times. Um, we've used the taste testing to be able to, you know, see if it really is going to sell. You know, or should we bother doing this if the kids don't want it? And that was one of the, with the chili, we put out a white chili and if they didn't like it, there it wasn't worth the expense of trying to create it as a menu item and keep it on there. And we're okay with that. You know, we go in with these expectations that kids are gonna love everything and they don't, Mo like a lot of the time they don't do it. So we, we're okay with that. It's just, it's, it's a good experience for the kids and it's a good experience for us. Um, so for a successful taste test, you got to have some great names and Kathy, she's so good at coming up with some good names, you know, they need to be snazzy, they need to be, uh, they need to turn heads so you can't just do a standard, you know, come eat your carrots, you've got to, you got to give some spark to them. Um, we also discovered that you can put if you can dip it into anything, you're going to have success. So dips are really helpful. You know, it doesn't have to necessarily just be a ranch dip. Uh, we've done hummus. We made our squash into a dip, like a sweeter dip. So we use dips quite a bit to, to get kids to try new foods. Um, so when we sit down to, to run a taste test, it takes, it does take effort. You just can't like spur of the moment decide that you're going to, on, on some things, I will say, uh, just run a taste test. You wanna make sure you have staff that are available to help um, to run a taste test because it, it can take a few hands, especially if you have large groups. We uh, do some of our taste testing right in the cafeteria during lunch. So that's a hundred plus kids at a time. Um, so you want your staff who are available and willing to help. You need to make sure that your ingredients are, are also available. You know, you wouldn't want to do fresh greens you know, from outdoors in December, it's not going to work. But if you can find the sourcing you need um, and the right timing, you, you can come up with some some great um, items. 
Uh, so Kathy and I have encountered the time. You want to be able to have the time to make a good product. So, you know, when we're doing our smoothies, if we don't plan it and write it down in our calendars to make sure that we can get there and get everything processed, um, it, again, it won't work. Um, we advertise and hype the heck out of everything that we do. We talk it up, we make posters. If there's a farmer connected to it, we will engage that farmer. We've had farmers come into school and explain their item that they are growing. We um, will do little um, education flyers that'll go home. So part of our fresh fruits and vegetable program, we did star fruit. So we send a little education piece about star fruit home. Or if we did carrots from Fisher Farm in Winterport, we would send information home on where those carrots came from and why they're special. Um, so it's a lot of hype. It's a lot of, you know, really getting the kids to engage and it's getting the adults, adults to do it too. They need to be enthusiastic and they need to understand what the product is because if they, if the adults adults in the room try it and are happy about it, they're going to go ahead and they're going to, the kids are going to try it too. You know, um, adults are really influential. You, we think that, or with my two children, they ignore me 99% of the time in my head, but in reality, they're not. They're watching me. They're watching me try that new, new item. They're watching the way that I, I conduct myself. So we do the same thing with our kids at school. Uh, so one of our favorite taste tasting items is stone soup. So our second grade, uh, grade level. So this is an example of a grade level taste testing. And it's, it's an example of having the kids help out to, with it too. Read the folk tale stone soup. And the, you know, the premise of the story, if you don't know what it is, is about sharing. And it's about, you know, creating something when you think you have nothing, but with the help of others, you can you can make something wonderful. So the kids will bring in the vegetables. Each classroom is responsible for a specific vegetable. Uh, it's great to go into a classroom that smells like onions because we have the kids do all the chopping and prepping in the in the classroom and. Uh, we go over how to do that. We have a mobile kitchen that allows the kids to have, you know, safe knife handling skills and we wear gloves and we wash our hands and we do all those great things. We then take all those vegetables and Kathy and I go back into the kitchen, mostly Kathy, and she does the prep. You know, obviously we have to make things a little bit smaller and we have to do some more washing, but we come up with a great stone soup that the kids are able to try and they enjoy it. So we have done stone soup a number of times. The kids love it and it has become a menu item for us. It is vegetable soup, basically. There isn't anything really too terribly special about it. It has a fun name and the kids put the effort into it. So they, they enjoy it. And then when they see it on the menu, they think back to that experience. And that is a wonderful thing. Um, we, we toss in some fun, some fun vegetables in there. You know, we've had rutabagas. We have anything you, you can think of, we kind of can throw into that soup because it's really just a basic vegetable soup. So when you offer kids opportunities, they're gonna become explorers. Um, we also want our adults to be explorers. So when we give them this new, new thing to try, nine times out of 10, they're gonna do it. And we have, have asked our kids to eat some pretty unusual things. We uh, did a program thanks to um, Maine Ag in the classroom, which was uh, farm to preschool, where we had um, different menu items um, every other week that the preschool kids could try. So we had squashes and carrots and blueberries and honey and Pineland Farm cheese. We had all sorts of different things that the kids could try. And it wasn't just in a standard way. We would try to make it unique. And with a little bit of enticing through enthusiasm and energy, the kids always tried tried something. Um, it's amazing. We all have stories that um, where kids don't know where their food comes from. Uh, we, you know, I've had kids tell me they didn't know carrots came from the ground when I pull one out. We all have those types of stories. And our, our goal is to, to change that and have, have kids understand where their food comes from. You know, your taste tests don't have to be these big elaborate, you know, grade level or they don't have to be a uh, whole school. You can do them on a smaller on a smaller scale. So for example, you know, the kids go for walks around our gardens. I will see them and say, hey, go out and see if you can find 
the plant that tastes that smells like onions and give that a try and they're going to try the chives now of course it's with directions of an adult so they're not just re-eating random plants but nonetheless that is a smaller opportunity or when i have young greens growing in the garden i'll say tell a classroom teacher hey take your kids for a walk and go ahead and try those young greens there's that they're, they're going to enjoy it and to have that opportunity to pick and try um, the kids the kids do really well with that so we always evaluate how our taste testing went. So that's roasted carrots there. Um, and it, depending on your grade level, you know, we'll usually do a thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs to the side. If um, thumbs up, if you liked it, thumbs down, if you don't, thumbs to the side, if you're like, nah, it's all right. Um, we'll do clapping, you know, two claps if you like it kind of thing. Um, we've done formal ones where they complete like like the older kids will do a little form um, looking for the texture and it's just another learning opportunity for kids to understand like what their palate is feeling um, but we always will do some form of evaluation um, again Kathy has taught me a lot about kids palates and that those palates grow and change so you know I have learned not to want to do you know someone said succotash or casserole or maybe eggplant at kindergarten but that's things that we could probably try at an older level. Um, I talked a little bit already about how it doesn't have to be a whole school or whole classroom. It can just be one child. It could be a, a small group of kids who are outside playing. Um, our garden down in Winterport is right off the playground. So they have ample opportunity to try new things fresh from the garden. Um, when they, I'm working down there, they'll come over and we'll, we'll try some new things together. Um, so these are some examples of what we've done in um, in RSU 22. Uh, we've done a, um, we partner with groups. So we did a blueberry smoothie with the Maine Dairy Council, and that was a whole school level taste test. Uh, our fresh fruits and vegetable program is again whole whole school. Uh, we did we've done a number of things, but the one that sticks out to me is star fruit because we're trying to figure out how to slice it. Um, <laughs> Uh, we worked with Fuel Up to Play 60 to do roasted carrots for the whole school. We do a grade level apple taste test. We have an, um, an apple orchard and we'll do applesauce. Um, Maine Agriculture in the classroom worked with us and we did a farm to pre-K and we did a variety of things that I had mentioned before. Uh, squash dip sticks out in my head because I have a picture that goes with that in just a second. Uh, and then uh, one of our favorites was to do school honey. Uh, we have an apiary here on campus and to be able to teach the kids about pollinators and to try the honey is, uh, was fun to watch. Um, so this is a picture of a sweet little girl. Uh, we sweetened the, our dip with honey. So to see the smile on her face, I had another picture of a kid who didn't like it as much, but I thought I'd keep it, keep it here. Um, we, we are very lucky in our district to be able to do things like this and to have this experience for this little girl who um, in all likelihood has never had squash like that. So um, just two more pictures, a couple more pictures of our what we have here. Uh, the little girl is my daughter, AJ. Uh, she loves green peppers and will eat them uh, like an apple. And then you can see some of the things that we've grown. Um, so I am, very happy to share what we do in the district. I encourage you to follow us on Facebook. Um, I try to post pretty frequently about what we're doing um, as I like to see what other organizations are doing, particularly um, Justin's farm that he has down there. Um, so thank you. I'm gonna stop sharing so I can see everyone's faces again. Perfect. Oh, so many things. Um, so where are we on time here? Oh, just a little bit over. Um, I would take a couple of questions if you have them. Go ahead and unmute yourself if you would like to ask just a few questions. Just an update on the chat box. <clears throat> We've had some fun conversations. Um, you've inspired us by several topics it looks like and I'm not going to go through it all but talked about um, I was asking about a cool name for Brussels sprouts like <laughs> cabbages or tiny green balls of awesomeness is wonderful um let's see oh I lost my place 
Ryan, you had a question about getting the school administration on board with an apiary. Oh my, do I have a whole entire presentation already built? I have a folder, no nine yards. That was one of the first things that we did, well, I did when I started with big dreams and ideas. Someone approached me about a, an apiary and I said, sure, what the heck, why can't we? And we did it. So uh, you'll see that in our, in our uh, video, but if you are really, really do wanna know how to do it, let me know. I even have like the letter from our insurance company said, go nuts, so. <laughs> I'd just like to add a funny story. Remember when we did the microgreens for pre-K? Yes, and it's like kids cried. <laughs> they're, they're a little spicy, so you do have to kind of watch things like that. Oh my gosh, that was so much fun. The most expensive microgreens one I have ever bought in my life. And the kids were like, spicy, it was so cute. Again, palates, they mature and change. And oh, so that was funny. Yep. <laughs> and you, if you added a cracker with anything, crackers work great. So we would balance some of the things we'd have with, with an alternative just to get them to try it. And then they're, if they're like, no way, we would, um, we would then have a cracker for them. And that worked out great. That was a fun project. That was a lot of fun, a ton of work, but it was a lot of fun, so. All right, excellent. Um, we are pretty much on time. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to Maggie. She I is think, going to um, share her screen, I hope. Just sorry, Brittany. Um, I think Ann had a question really quick. Oh, I'm sorry, go for it, Ann. Thanks, sorry. I was gonna just put it in the chat. Um, is there an issue as far as kids with food sensitivities or um, eating issues? Sure. Yeah. So uh, one of the bonuses is that I'm a nurse. So I am very aware of what is happening. And I always will reach out to that building school nurse to see if there's anything. And we always, always, always notify parents that we're going to do something. It's part of our policy. We don't, um, our wellness policy is pretty strict other than last year. I didn't care what happened last year, but this year um, we don't allow unsolicited foods. And if we do have foods, we have to notify families. Um, so they would always get a week ahead of, especially when we did that um, pre-K program, they would get a little write-up about what we're doing and they could always opt out of it. I don't think I had one opt out of it. And I, we avoid allergens. Mm -hmm. um, as a person with uh, a nut allergy, I don't, I can't even like think about going down that road with kids. So yeah, thank you. All right. Hello. Let me just try to do the share screen um, really quickly. So we're all doing this together. <laughs> Let's see. Allows you to share your screen. Oh man. I have like the high school musical song. We're all in this together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if no, if somebody doesn't like that song or if it's in your head. This is how I live. My daughter is a musical theater kid and she sings at the top of her lungs, including high school musical stuff all the time. <laughs> Okay, um, it seems like, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna try it again. Aha, can everyone yes. see my screen? Excellent. Perfect, great. I just had to do some computer stuff. All right, so um, as Brittany introduced me, I am Maggie Blumenthal. I am currently the RSU 19 garden coordinator. Um, however, I will be talking today about my time as a food core service member at RSU 12, which is at the Windsor Elementary School, but it encompasses Chelsea, Palermo, Whitefield um, area. So this would be our farm to school initiatives. Now, before coming on as a food core service member, the Windsor Elementary School had no garden program. Um, so it was kind of built up from scratch with a lot of collaboration from different parties. And so that's kind of what I will touch upon, not necessarily building the garden, but how um, you can, I guess, have a garden, because we've had a garden now for two years at that school, and then we've done taste tests from the garden. Um, definitely not as classy as Brittany's taste tests, I will say. <laughs> um, all right, so. This is me. Again, I just introduced myself. This is during um, the lockdowns and I was doing a, a mobile lesson 
of planting. And so here's my like setup on the floor. It's very professional. All right, let's see. Can I go to the next one? Nope. Okay, there we go. All right, so today I'll be talking about partnering with our nutrition service director, who's Mike Flynn. Just a little name drop there. He's a really amazing, um, <laughs> an amazing, um, I don't even know the word, but he's just a really great partner to work with if you're trying to do any type of school, farm to school initiatives. He's closely partnered with the Department of Education Nutrition. Um, he has a lot of different hats that he wears all the time. Um, but his official position is as the nutrition service director for RSU 12. So for that, again, I say DOE cooking videos because myself and Mike have collaborated with the Department of Education to do some culinary training videos. Essentially, I was like his sous chef, um, which was kind of fun to do. I had like food core garb. And so that would be on the DOE website if anyone's interested. Um, and then the Fisherman Feeding Mainers program, which I will talk about a little bit after this slide, I believe, and then produce boxes. So those are the different programs that I've worked with him and they all focus around how we're bringing local food to kids, um, whether that be fish or whether that be just vegetables and fruit from farms. Um, the next part that I'll be talking about is starting the school garden and introducing taste tests in a very low key way. So this is kind of, um, I would say more tangible because as a two year garden, um, you get, well, or, you know, maybe you don't know how to grow things or, you know, things don't really work out all the time. So we had like really tiny beets, really tiny radishes. And so we couldn't do a school-wide taste tests for those things, but we did class-wide taste tests. So I will talk about those and how to do them during COVID and then how we did them before COVID. Um, this picture, this first one, is our first year garden. Um, pretty proud of it. The little beds are really cute. We have, I believe, 10 beds, and each of them was for, were for each grade level because we were, um, or we are a pre-K through eight school. Um, and then below is our first um, lettuce harvest and that was again during the pandemic last summer. And so I had little bags set up, I had gloves, so people could come and just collect what they wanted to, but in a, a fairly safe way. Uh, most of it just went to our staff at the school. Okay, all right, so, um, and this is again, just another kind of overview. So the, when we collaborated, Mike and I, with the Department of Education um, for the Fisherman Feeding Manures program, we made a video highlighting fish as you know, the item to kind of, to give that promotion aspect. Um, and so we use the recipe, the crunchy baked fish, which is um, a school um, outlined recipe. So it's gonna be easily used right in the um, nutrition program. And then this is our harvest over here, which I'm really proud of our first few tomatoes and our little tiny beets and our weird looking cucumbers. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, yeah, so for, again, like Brittany was saying, um, there's a lot of promotion that goes into starting a taste test. And so I didn't choose to do a school-wide taste test for the fish. Um, because it was a new thing, you know, I, we weren't sure I had some input from other um, staff members and administrators that some kids, you know, they were not going to like the fish. So I chose to do kind of a sample size. So I did the middle school wing, which six, seven, eighth, and then I did five, fifth, fifth grade. Um, so I went into their class and gave them, and I apologize that I can't get a closer picture of this. It's kind of lost in translation among my various emails. Um, but I, gave all of the classes a, a slip of paper that explained what the program was, what fish, what fish is, you know, what fish would they be eating in the coming days, um, the nutrition facts. And then if you see, I wonder if I, I don't know if you can see my mouse, um, but okay. But I am circling, this is the, the little promotional sheet that I gave them. And then the second page, which is this section here was a little activity where they could 
you know, it, it just tells you the nutrition. So like fish is good for your eyes. And so they could cut out the little eyes. They could cut out the um, little bones and then the heart and then kind of create their own fish. Um, and in the back of that sheet, I had a, oops. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> I had a blank fish where they could fill it in. So that was just kind of a fun activity. I'm not really sure the middle schoolers, you know, bought into that, but the fifth graders loved it. Um, but that's okay. They're a little harder. It's a hard sell. Um, <laughs> so, and again, what Brittany was saying is stickers, or I don't know if Brittany, I think maybe Ryan mentioned this in the comments about stickers. So everyone loves stickers, including middle schoolers. So if you're working with the older grades, that's still um, consistent. And so I chose to use the harvest of the month stickers and it wasn't the, I don't, I'm forgetting what month protein um, is in their chart. However, I used the stickers because we were doing taste tests for fish. So I figured that was very, um, it made sense. Um, and so this was my survey. So did you like it? And do you eat this at home? And this is just to get a little bit of background. And I gave this to the students that tried the fish after they did try it. So we, as I said a little bit ago, we only did four grades. And so we only got enough fish to provide with the four grades. Um, and I believe also staff members too, but I did not survey them because they're not kids. Um, so we had a decent amount of responses. There are some students that were just very focused on their recess time, so they didn't use the stickers. However, um, from it, I got a really nice pie chart that I made. And so if I am remembering correctly, it was a lot of them didn't like it, but there was a decent amount that did. I assumed that there would be almost all of the kids that tried the fish would not have liked it. So I was pleasantly surprised and so was the nutrition service team. Um, so we were all really surprised that they liked it as much as they did. Um, and then it's about 50-50 for if they tried it, if they do eat fish at home, which is also really important information just for um, implementing it within our menu team. And so the school that I was at, Windsor Elementary, we didn't actually fully embrace the fish as a menu item. However, I believe Chelsea Elementary did. Um, and I'm not quite sure how they did the taste test there um, or how that worked out, but this is just for Windsor. So that was a really cool program. And hopefully they'll do it this year too. These are a few other things that I've done. So this over here, these trays of, if you can't see that's beans and there's also grapes in there. That was, um, pre-COVID and that was my first setup of a taste test. So I chose to do it during lunch where I would get most of the younger grades, um, at least kindergarten through fifth. And I had these little trays and each of the kids, you know, they could have like a bean and grape little meal. And I did do this during our protein month for harvest of the month. So I used the poster in the back um, and I had a little recycling center and it was very cute. And I chalked out a little section where they could stand so that they weren't like crowding and everyone got um, some beans and grapes. And that was pretty interesting too, because it was all raw. So a lot of them were apprehensive, but, let, um, but once, I don't know, maybe a group of kids came over and one of those kids tried it and was like, oh, it's actually not that bad. Then the rest of them just you know, joined right in and they're like, oh, wait, I want to try it. I want to try it. And some kids, you know, they just ate the beans or most kids just ate the grapes. But, you know, at least it was all kind of a, a mix. So that was really, that was exciting because I was a little nervous because it's kind of a weird combination that I'd never had before, but it did taste really good. Um, and there was a little bit of a seasoning, I think, on top of it, but I am, it is escaping me what it was, but maybe I'll try to remember and put it in the chat so everyone else can try it too, because it was really tasty. Um, and then in that, in this left-hand corner was uh, another harvest of the month, collaboration month. So it was apples and I believe, I'm not really sure what apple, I want to say probably September or October. Um, and so I had a farm 
a local farm donate a bunch of apples and then I had it out during their dismissal time with a bunch of sheets of paper and some brown paper bags. And this was the way that I figured I would get the most kids um, involved in just taking some apples home. So, you know, on their way out, on their way to the bus, they just grab an apple, grab a bag, put a few apples in there, whatever they would like. So that was kind of a cool activity and they went really fast. Okay. Thank you, Samantha. Um, okay, so this was our produce boxes at the end of this past year. And Mike did a really great job reaching out to a lot of farmers. I believe we had Emory Farms in the Windsor area. And then we also did Beth's Farm, which I think they have a couple different um, locations. And we just put the boxes together. We had sheets sent home to sign up and then the kids would get the boxes. And that was really cool. So I'm just gonna speed through because I wanna to get to the taste tests. So this is our garden taste test. This was the most fun part for me. Um, I did it primarily with first, second and fifth grade. Unfortunately, I have no pictures from fifth grade, um, but I do have pictures from first and second grade. So the first grade, we did a plant part wrap. And what we did was we did a scavenger hunt first in the garden. So all of the little first graders, they found leaves, they found seeds, they found flowers and roots, and then they put them all together and ate something. I definitely directed as they're not gonna just eat random roots, like, you know, it would be a carrot or a beet or something like that. Um, so that was a really fun and a fun activity to have them explore the garden as well as tasting directly what's in the garden. Um, over here, she, we have, this is second grade and we pulled beets and we use them as crayons. And then after we used them as crayons, we ate them. So that was a really, also a really comprehensive way to show them that you can take something directly out of the garden, wash it, draw with it, which is a fun activity, and then eat it all in one swoop. Um, and then we had sunflowers down here. And that we grew the sunflowers, we harvested them. And this is our plant parts eating. This is the beets and then the sunflowers. And then we put them into two different categories depending on what the kids wanted to try. So at home, I brought the sunflower seeds. I roasted them with um, these two options and then the kids got to choose which kind they liked, it the best, like, like they liked the best. I did accidentally burn the honey roasted ones. So they were not very good. But um, you know, I, upon doing it again, I probably would put them in the oven for less time. That's fine. <laughs> so that was a cool way to um, show them that they could harvest sunflower seeds and then eat them with a really fun seasoning so it's not super bland. And so here's the kids taking them out of the sunflower. And they were really big, they were pretty huge. Um, so that was a really fun time. And that is the end of my presentation. I am sorry for zooming through that. So if anyone has any questions, please let me know. I do. Okay. <laughs> um, so when one ha harvests sunflower seeds, what give little tips about that? Yeah, so the the seeds, I let them dry a little bit just before I put them in the oven. Um, and I let the sunflowers themselves dry too. So they were easier to just knock right off of the sunflowers for the kids because they have tiny hands. Um, and yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty self, it was pretty easy actually. I wasn't, I was surprised at how quickly um, the sunflowers seeds actually came off. So I wouldn't say, I'm not sure if you're looking for anything specific, but definitely well, let I mean, them dry. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, I'm growing sunflowers. Hopefully they'll Mm -hmm. you know be okay just uh, any tips about you know when is the best time to take the seeds off and that kind of thing oh yeah yeah so we cut the sunflowers when all of the leaves and the outside leaves turn brown and they started to wilt and that's a good um indicator of when you chop it and then i let them dry flat um so that there's no moisture in it because a few of them i didn't let dry flat and they got a little bit moldy so i just threw those out and you just make sure they're super dry before you take the sunflower seeds off. And then I went 
a little bit extra or you probably should do this anyways, but dry out the seeds after then you harvest them before you roast them too, just to really make sure that you're not um, getting any type of moisture in there. Wonderful. I'm seeing some other, um, some great comments, wonderful things that you're doing, Maggie. Uh, earlier, Ryan dropped a link in the chat to the DOE recipe culinary training videos. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Yeah. A little comments about middle schoolers. Mm -hmm. um, some people maybe are a little scared of middle schoolers and some people love them. <laughs> love reading the chat. This is great. Um, but wonderful job, Maggie. Yes, yeah. I'm, again, sorry for going so fast. I realized I had a lot of material and not enough time. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of these resources will be shared later as well. Yeah. Yes, Anne, Annie. Thanks for, I have another question. What do you do in the winter time when you're not outside or can't get outside or, or how do you parlay that? Um, in the winter time, we, I did, I did try to do um, some like food lessons. So I did the plant part wrap, but I didn't harvest it from the garden. So I just went to the store or you could get in partnership with a local farm. And then um, before COVID I was doing in-person cooking lessons. So I had fifth grade set up all the materials. Like Brittany was saying, we had knife skill training as well. They had graders that was a little dangerous. Um, but it worked out. <laughs> so they were grading the carrots and the beets and they were making the wraps in the classroom. So that's another way you can do it and just you know, kind of bring the summer and spring to the winter time. Perfect, thank you, Maggie. Um, again, we will share these presentations and this video will be available. So thank you very much for that. Um, I'm gonna do share our um, the RSU 22 school garden and I became an iMovie ninja in a week to figure out how to do all that. So we tested it yesterday and the sound seemed okay. Um, I will keep my volume up and I've optimized my sharing so it should be all right. Um, but again, the link will be available. So if you can't hear it really well, we'll be able to, you'll be able to see it. You can go on YouTube and shoot us. Uh, search RSU 22, I figured out how to do all that too. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen right now. Hi, I'm excited to present the RSU 22 School Gardens. This is our orchard. It has 15 trees, dwarf and standard size apple trees. We also have newly added peach trees, and this will be the first year that we will have a full peach harvest. Yes, I need to uh, fix those branches. The weight of the peaches is pulling them down and I don't want them to split. We'll be excited, excited to share these peaches with our students in RC22. One of my favorite trees is our little plum tree. I remember growing up as a kid and going outside and seeing those plum trees in my, in my front yard. I did try one of them recently and they were very tart, but I'm sure they will come along shortly. I wanna thank Fedco for the trees. It was fun to go down and pick those trees up in the warehouse. I did manage to lose my badge that day. You can see all our trees. Those dwarf trees are on the right and they're easy for our students to pick and enjoy. Next is our new orchards at Smith and Wagner School. These orchards were brought to you by the um, organization Retree Us, and we were very fortunate to get these trees in 2019. This is our first season to have some fruit. This is our crown jewel. It's our honeybee apiary at Hamden Academy. We have three active hives right now. And in the fall, our students will harvest the honey and sell it. 
It is amazing to see how much money they make from local honey. Everyone wants to buy a jar, and especially those chapsticks. Our students in our alternative education program work on our raised beds at the high school. This is our first gardening experience at the high school as we do not have a hoop house or an orchard. It's been a nice wet season so they did not have to put in the drip hose, but usually that's how they irrigate those beds. Our school at uh, our preschool through grade two, McGraw Elementary, has little raised beds that were put in in 2020. And this year it's been fun to see green beans growing underneath our um, carport. The green beans were from a bingo game that we had at the end of the school year. You can see them in between the benches. A couple years ago, each student at McGraw was able to put in a bulb. So we had 350 bulbs bloom in the spring and students enjoy seeing them early because we have uh, plants that bloom in March and early April. Unfortunately, the squirrels have taken a lot of our bulbs recently. This is our hoop house at Reedsbrook Middle School. This was built in 2012. And every year we have a great harvest of tomatoes, early greens. Sometimes we experiment with um, sweet potatoes. This is our new greenhouse at Smith School. It's still being built, but it's a polycarbonate side greenhouse. And we were able to get that with COVID relief funds from the federal government. I'm excited that we can heat this if we decide to do that. A Boy Scout built the shed for us and we keep all of our equipment and supplies in that shed. We also have a sensory garden where kids can touch and feel different plants. This is the outdoor bed at Reedsburg Middle School. It's our biggest outdoor garden. It has been in front of the building for three years. Previous to that, it was along the side. We had to move it because it was the year of the propane tank and propane tanks were buried across the district and they always happened to be where I had my gardens. But we were able to move the soil and build it up again. And we have had one of the best gardens to date in this location. I'm very pleased with what we have because it gets tons of sun and it's easily accessible to our water. I'm going to take you through this little garden so you can see what we're growing this year. We have cabbages, beans, tangerine cosmos, zucchinis, beets, broccoli, onions. I tried to do a hugel culture mound. The tomatoes took over, so I will have to restructure for next year. The peas finally took off. And you can see our signature sunflower in the right hand corner. We are invested in our students and we're always trying to grow great minds. So we have branded ourselves with a sunflower. These carrots are Bangor carrots from Fedco. They are long and they are developed for our soil. I hope you enjoyed our school garden. Please reach out to me, Brittany Lehman, with questions or comments. Excellent, yay! Um, I get whoa. Ah. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> um, I did one shot that, so it is a little a little rough, and I apologize for the poor quality. Our fancy high school has interesting internet. 
that is going to be fixed on Monday. So um, that is our school garden. Um, I have, I could take a minute or two of questions anyone might have about our garden and then I'll let Kathy go ahead and finish this, our session out. Yes. Any problems with deer? No, believe it or not, in any of my locations, I have not, knock on wood, had any problems with deer, which is interesting because um, down in Winterport, they're surrounded by woods. So um, I do have tulips planted everywhere. So that, that sometimes helps. Um, on the back side of our, our hoop house at Reedsbrook is our um, yellow tulip garden for mental health awareness and uh, suicide prevention. And in the spring, that's gorgeous and full of yellow parroted tulips and is very lovely. So, um, but no deer problems. It's a lot of fun. Um, I am lacking on garden volunteers this year. My garden volunteers kids have all moved on and graduated. So this will be a recruiting year for me. Um, I enjoy it so much though, it was, it's my, my relief time to be in the garden. So I did try to work in it last night, but I brought my new puppy and all he managed to do was roll in the compost and like chew on my blueberry bushes. So <laughs> we went home, it was a disaster. So anyways, um, all right, thank you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how did you, the ap apiary with the fence around it, did you, was that something that was built specifically for that? Yes. So part of the um, requirement from our insurance company is that it had to have an eight foot fence to prevent people from, a locked fence to prevent people from climbing in. And what we found with that height, we work with um, a beekeeper, a professional uh, here in the area and uh, that eight foot fence causes our, they don't go through it like you would think they would. They spin up and go over the top. And because of where it's located, there isn't any foraging. It's across from our turf field. So they actually spread out and go pretty far off campus. Um, and that was our pitch for people who were concerned their kids were gonna be stung left and right. Um, was just that that doesn't happen. That honeybees tend to travel uh, two to five miles to forage. Um, so uh, the fencing is required and he goes in and weed wax. I've weed whacked in there in the past, um, but right now we've let everything kind of go because it's, you know, open pollinators, so. Excellent. All righty, Kathy, it's you. Better unmute myself. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Hopefully. Okay, can you see that all right? Okay, um, so today I'm going to talk mostly about the Harvest of the Month program, which is um, handled through the Department of Education Child Nutrition um, Department. And uh, Robin Kerber oversees that program and was kind enough to share some slides that we actually did a farm to school presentation um, with Maine School Nutrition earlier this year. And um, some of the slides were about Harvest of the Month. So she was generous to share those and her contact information is on this slide. So, let's... okay. There we go. So um, someone had mentioned their, um, the website, there is a, um, nice section of the farm to school uh, child nutrition website that has um, training videos, it ha they have recipes. Um, and I'm gonna just try to go there and show you a little bit. So this is um, that section and you can see they have different culinary videos uh, right here so you can, um, if you're looking for something on vegetable preparation, um, you can go in there and take a look. Oops, need to do that. <laughs> so anyway, that's a good resource. Um, I would recommend you checking that out. Okay. Yeah, let me... 
Okay, so the Harvest of the Month program, that actually came out of a strategic plan through the Farm to School Network um, in collaboration with the um, uh, main DOE Child Nutrition. Um, they started this uh, two or th maybe three years ago and um, the schools pledge to participate, um, uh, pledging to have on the menu monthly um, according to the schedule and purchase from uh, farmers and producers. So last year there were 60 uh, pledged schools and districts and 100, 100 farmers and it's expanded to CACFP which is the Child Adult Care Food Program. And I won't go to the website but basically you can go to their website. There's a section of the harvest of the month and you can see um, the schedule which I'm gonna share with you and um, get some good resources there. So when you pledge to join, you highlight the monthly ingredient and I do it twice a month um, in all seven schools. Um, and I've found that this has really helped me to kind of keep on top of um, finding new, new resources. And um, we really need to further develop our farm to school program in the cafeteria, but this helps me every month to kind of give me that push uh, in that direction. Um, so when you do pledge, you get different resources. As I said, one of them is this nice flyer. Um, we were getting stickers and beautiful posters. And then um, they also have a monthly newsletter. I'm gonna go to that. Um, so this one uh, shows the September um, from last year uh, newsletter. So again, it gives the resource of that flyer that has recipes and fun facts. And you can print that off if you uh, select that. Also, there's their nice posters, um, which those are the ones they send us, but you could print those. Let me get back to... And then it shows the coming months, what, what's going to be featured. They spotlight a farmer, which is nice. And then they list other farmers where you can um, check in with if you wanna make purchases. And then also for um, your teachers, you could con connect to Ag in the Classroom, which has great uh, classroom resources. So, and you can also sign up um, on that link to receive that the Ag in the Classroom resources. So there's new materials that are coming our way um, next year, this, this school year. And they're going to, instead of getting stickers, we're going to get some downloadable recipes that will have um, quantities that we can use in our kitchens for like 50 or more servings and also for um, home use. So we can send those home with the students. Um, there's gonna be new cafeteria signage for our hotlines. And once we have all of our salad bars back, um, we'll have some nice signage promoting the harvest of the month items. And then we'll get um, more meal signage posters. So the harvest of the month really is a, a great way to um, highlight our uh, local purchases, our school garden usage. Um, it just is a kind of a great way, at least I've found to keep connected and expand our uh, options for our students. So this is um, what the uh, schedule is. Um, so each month there's a different item, as you can see, and then I, I just listed some of the different uh, items that we uh, have made or the, that and put on our menu. Um, I'll just, because we're getting close on time here, I'll just say um, that ones in red are the ones that I would say for, you know, school gardens that we have um, utilized or you can in your school as well. So uh, in June, we've had um, some beautiful lettuce that we've had on our salad bars or used them for sandwiches. And I've highlighted that on the menu. I use this logo, um, the Harvest of the Month logo on all my menus. And I, I say what the item's gonna be. And then I put that logo also on the menu that for the day that we're featuring it. And we don't have enough greens from the garden for all the schools, but we um, usually will do that in Reedsbrook and sometimes have enough to for the high school. 
And then in the summer months, um, like for this year, we've just been giving like the, uh, if we have the summer squash, we would just give that whole as well as cucumbers um, for our summer program. Once we aren't feeding any, we've had feeding a few kids for summer school. And so we have done a little bit with them um, with our school garden items, but usually we just um, give it to people that are picking up summer meals. And then in the fall, we do tomatoes, um, of course, on all our, for our sandwiches and salads. And then we could do a salsa. And for our apple orchard, whoops, for our apple orchard, Brittany does her applesauce program. And some, if she has extra apples, then we'll give those out in the cafeteria. We'd like to do an, a program, a thing we call Apple Fest, where we get apples, a large variety. We set up um, baskets on a table and we have information about each different apple so they can try different kinds. Of course, that was kind of hasn't, didn't go, we didn't really do that last year because of COVID, you know, not having them grab it, touch things, but we'll get back to that. Okay. And then just, I wanted to let you know that um, some exciting news and that uh, a new bill passed, um, LD 636. And we have had a local produce fund where for every um, $3 that we spend on local produce, we get a dollar back and, and up to $1,000 or $1,500. But now we can get 5,000 to 5,500. We get the extra 500 if we participate in um, a training. So that if you're, you know, if you can make sure your school nutrition director knows that it's a great uh, opportunity to help be able to afford purchasing more local. Then what we do is each month we turn in our receipts um, with the local food fund claim to Robin Kerber. Um, so this year, the uh, LD 636 has expanded from just produce to proteins, value-added dairy, um, but it does also include like we can buy processed produce from farmers because um, sometimes that's helpful um, with our timing in the kitchens. And then this, um, there's a non-lapsing fund that means the funds roll over from year to year and next year the fund will have uh, $600,000. So that's a, a really great resource. You can also, if you're, if you're growing a lot in your garden and you're selling it to your school district, I think that happens in some districts, then that this can be applied to that local foods fund. So I think that that is all I have. I uh, hope I didn't miss anything and I can take any questions. Excellent, thank you, Kathy. Thank you. We love the Harvest of the Month program. It is, it's, the resources are beautiful. The posters are lovely. Um, and it's, it is a great way to just, to get those foods into our program, so. Sometimes it's overwhelming to try to, um, and time consuming to do the, um, try to get more local foods. Um, although they are so much more available. Um, this just helps, it's a good way to start and just focus on one item and also a good way to incorporate your school garden programs. Yeah, and now that with our chef position and hopefully even though he hasn't started yet with hopes for expansion in the future, um, <laughs> it will be a way for us to be able to pull from local um, and the harvest of the month just gives us that springboard to be able to do that. Lovely. Um, so again, thank you, Kathy, and thank you, Maggie, for presenting. Uh, is there any qu questions to finish up our day as it is 9.29? Wow. <laughs> I know time just flies by. I know, so fast. I've, I've also been inspired. I'm just kind of checking out the chat really quick. Um, and had a question <clears throat> that sort of got answered in the chat, it looks like, but if there's any other thoughts about um, determining, obtaining permission, access to school land for gardens and structures, <clears throat> maybe that could also be something that could be emailed. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, and like I said in the chat for us, it's um, having an enthusiastic person who can go ahead and I talk a lot and talk really fast <laughs> and you know, people are like, oh, all right, that sounds like a good idea. Like when they had to move our garden because of the propane tanks that were going in, like it was 
she like our superintendent almost paid like twenty eight thousand dollars to move them somewhere else because she was just didn't want to touch our nutrition program. I mean, our garden program, which God love her. I said, thank you, but that's OK. We can move our garden around so you don't have to dig into the tar. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to thank you all for all this. This is so inspiring. And I, I am not a shy person. And I've been at the school for 35 plus years. So they know me. Um, and I try to, to be polite, but also asking forgiveness rather than permission, but always with a positive and loving Definitely. heart. <laughs> yeah, I live my life. I'm like, oh, I didn't know you didn't want an apple tree there, but it's there. <laughs> I do the same exact thing. And again, it's just being in front of your school board as much as possible. When we did our apiary presentation, one of our board members wrote a check after the presentation. Wow. So it's really just, yeah, it's, it was a substantial check too. It got us started really well. So that's what it, it's just about being there and out in front and enthusiastic. And if you hit a roadblock, that's okay. It's just a challenge. Just find a way around it. So, yep. yep. Thank you. All right. Well, excellent. I appreciate everybody. And thank you for spending your Saturday with us and uh, best of luck to everybody in the upcoming school year. Um, it's, I'm looking forward to it. There'll be some normal things. There'll be some abnormal things, but it'll be okay. So, all right. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Excellent job. Beautiful. All right. Thank you.